In the previous lecture, using the example of the Deutsch algorithm, we have seen that quantum parallelism together with the effect of interference can bring certain quantum advantage to us when certain quantum computation tasks are carried out. There is another quantum effect that we have not discussed so much yet, which is entanglement. Now, using the protocol of teleportation, I will show you the power of entanglement. Here, let me assume that Alice and Bob share an entangled state, for example, the 5 plus state, which is one of the Bell states. This state is 1 over square root 2, 0, 0, plus 1, 1. This is a 2 qubit entangled state. One of the qubit is with Alice and one of the qubit is with Bob. On top of that, Alice has another qubit which is in the state psi that is in a linear superposition of the 0 and 1. So this dotted green box is to remind you that the top two qubits are in Alice's lab and the third qubit is in Bob's lab. The task that Alice would like to do is to tell Bob what is the state psi that she has? Let's now go through the protocol. So initially, this 3 qubit state is in a state of psi tensor with the Bell state. So initially, we started with psi tensor with the phi plus. Let's write it out. So there is the term alpha zero tensor with the Bell state. So that means we have one over square root two alpha zero tensor with zero zero plus one one. And there is the term that goes with beta one tensor with the Bell state. So that is beta one. Tensor with 0, 0, plus 1, 1. Both of them with the same coefficient, 1 over square root 2. Now, Alice apply a C0 gate between her two qubits, where the first qubit is the control qubit and the second qubit is the target qubit. Let's find out what happens to the state. So this C0 is for Alice lab. And for Alice, if the first qubit is 0, that means if the control is 0, nothing happens to the target. So this term is unaffected. Let me just copy it down. However, for this term, remembering this is the control qubit and the target qubit is this second qubit. So if the control is in 1, this 0 will be flipped from 0 to 1. The qubit in Bob's lab is unaffected. Here, the control again is in 1, so this target will be flipped from 1 to 0. And the last qubit is unaffected. So this is the state of the three qubits after the C0. Alice then apply a Hadamard gate on the first qubit. So for abbreviation, I just write H over here to mean the Hadamard on the first qubit and nothing is done on the second and third qubit. That will only affect the first qubit. So the zero will be turned into a superposition of zero and one. So in that case, we'll have zero, plus 1 over root 2 and the rest of the coefficient I'll just copy so this happened to this state 0 then nothing happens here and for this part the state 1 will be turned into 0 minus 1 so we will have 0 minus 1 and tensor with the second and third qubit.
All right. Uh, this is the state of the three qubits. Before, Alice does two projective measurements in a computational basis for her first and second qubit. Before that, let's sort out this expression. Since the first two qubits are in Alice's lab and she's doing a projective measurement for her two qubits, I'm going to sort out the three qubit states into the first two qubits, this two, and the last one. So the first two, there is the term that goes with zero and zero. This term contains zero and zero with the coefficient alpha. This term also contains zero and zero with the coefficient beta. Here, zero, zero is together with alpha zero for the third qubit. Here is beta one. So I will have alpha zero plus beta one. There's an overall factor of a half because you have one over square of two and another one over square of two for every term. So let me just put it outside. So that's the first term. There is also a term that goes with 0 and 1. Let's find out. So the 0 and 1, one of them is here. That goes with alpha times the cat 1. And another 0, 1 is over here. That goes with beta 0. There is also a term that goes with 1, 0. Where are they? One of them is here, one zero that goes with alpha and zero. And another term over here that goes with one zero, so that carries the coefficient minus beta together with the cat one. So we have alpha zero minus beta of one. That goes with this term. And finally, we have a term that goes with one one. So let's find them. Here is one one, so that carries coefficient alpha with the third cat being 1. And here we have another 1, 1 that goes with the coefficient minus beta and 0 for the third qubit. And each of them has a coefficient of a half outside. So this is the state for the three qubits right before the measurement. Now, let's find out what happens when Alice does this projective measurement in the computational basis for the two qubits. So there is a probability that she will get 0, 0, and that occurs with probability 1 over 4, and similarly for all the other terms. In the case that if Alice is lucky, suppose she got the measurement 0, 0, then we can see that Bob's qubit is in the state alpha 0 plus beta 1, which is exactly the same state that Alice had in her lab before this whole protocol. And now remembering this is the third qubit, so that state is now with Bob. Not only Alice managed to tell Bob what state she has, this state actually is now in Bob's lab. And that is why this protocol is called teleportation. Bob is now in possession of a qubit that is exactly in the same state as what Alice had before in her lab. However, you see, because of the probabilistic nature of the measurement, unless Alice is very lucky and she got this outcome 0, 0, that occurs with probability a quarter, then this state is in Bob's lab. Otherwise, if she got the other outcomes, then Bob will have a different qubit. So, this is what we said before, that in many quantum computational tasks, the measurement outcome needs to be communicated to other parts of the quantum protocol where more operation needs to be done. In the next part, we are going to see how Alice transmits this classical information to Bob so that by the appropriate choice of the gaze that Bob can apply to his qubit, he can always get the state of his qubit to be the same as what Alice had initially. Okay, 
So this is the complete protocol with the classical communication channel also drawn in inside the circuit. As we said before, Alice needs to communicate her results to Bob. If not, Bob does not know which state does he get because the measurement in Alice Bob is probabilistic. So in the first case, as we said, Bob already has the state, so Bob doesn't need to do anything. However, if Alice's measurement result were to be 0, 1, then we see that Bob have a different state given by alpha 1 plus beta 0. But Bob can easily change this state to alpha 0 plus beta 1 by swapping the 0 and 1, so that means Bob simply has to apply that x gate to his qubit only, and then he will have the state psi that Alice had initially. Similarly, if Alice were to tell Bob that she got the measurement result 1, 0, then Bob's state of qubit will be alpha 0 minus beta 1, but by applying a z gate, he will be able to fix this phase. And again, having the state psi in his lab. And finally, in the case of the last measurement results, first Bob has to apply an x gate that swaps the 0 and 1, and then apply another z gate to correct this relative phase from minus to plus. So Bob needs to first apply an x gate, then followed by a z gate. And what he has will be the state phi. For the first case, of course, Bob doesn't do anything, so that's just the identity. What you can see here is that Bob will always have this same state if he knows the measurement results that Alice obtained. So that is shown over here. This red line is showing the classical communication channel that after the measurement, either Alice gets 0 or 1, she has to tell Bob, and depending on the result, Bob either does the identity over here or does the z-gate. And depending on the measurement, whether 0 or 1, and Bob will do an x-gate or nothing. So that will correspond to each of the four cases over here. Something quite remarkable is happening over here because Alice only needs to send two bits, two classical bits of information to Bob the measurement result of the first measurement and the results of the second measurement. But here, the value of alpha and beta, which I remind you are complex numbers, and they are continuous. The alpha and beta have a continuous spectrum. They are both complex numbers. They have an amplitude as well as a phase. But here, Alice is only sending Bob two bits of information. And not only that, Bob will have that state in his lab. This will not be possible if Alice and Bob does not share this entangled state at the beginning. So in this protocol, we can see the power of entanglement. So with the power of entanglement, the information on the state of a qubit can be teleported from one place to another place, and this will not be possible without entanglement. So here, entanglement can be thought of as a resource that is being shared between Alice and Bob. And this will not be possible in classical communication.